Today's episode is with Ong. Okay, so the importance of a software supply chain security cannot be overstated. So what is planned to uh, risk mitigation? Software supply chain. So we also need to align all the compliance and regulatory requirements. Such as so we have to understand the software where of material. Now today, the popular name as S bond. Uh, the next thing mm-hmm. is uh, establishing soft security policy. Uh, for instance, implement uh, software composition analysis SCA2 as forms and utilizing these documents for risk assessment. In the uh, visibility, transparency, risk assessment, vulnerability management, and compliance and regulatory requirements. The process is crucial in the test support uh, for several reasons. Uh, when we talk about uh, security assurance, uh, provide the value in the container image signing. Container image signing, signing have uh, various methods. Uh, so in the next year, by integrating the signing into the CI/CD pipeline without affecting the speed of current your web browser. What should we prioritize first, and uh, how should what parameters should the organizations look at while prioritizing? Hi everyone, this is Purushottam, and thanks for tuning in to Scale to Zero podcast. Today's episode is with Ong. Ong is a cybersecurity expert working at a global infrastructure services company. Prior to this, he was working with Standard Chartered Bank as a cloud application and container security SME. With a broad set of skills, he works in different areas from forensics to new technology to security awareness program. Um, welcome to the uh, um, episode. Uh, for our audience, do you want to briefly share about your journey? Yeah, thanks for having me, uh, Pirut. Yeah. So <clears throat> my name is Aung. Uh, I bring over 12 years of extensive experiences in the IT industry, heavy trespass, various sectors, in, uh, including education, financial institution, banking, and <clears throat> system integrator companies. So my career commands in Linux Unix engineering with a specific focus on Red Hat RPM-based Linux operating systems. Over time, I have transitioning towards exploring uh, cutting edge technology trends such as cloud, container, DevOps, DevSecOps, and application securities. Throughout my professional journey, I have specialized in uh, DevSecOps and application security, emphasizing the significance of security by designs and default cybersecurity programs and <clears throat> initiatives. This expertise uh, extends to uh, fortifying clouds and container orchestration platform like EKS, EKS, and Raha OpenShift uh, platform. So presently, my role as a uh, principal security architect uh, revolves mm-hmm. uh, around separating cybersecurity initiatives. I focus on a spectrum of cybersecurity domains, including Zero Trust, SASE, Secure Service Ace, SOAR, Security Operation, uh, Orchestration, Automation, and Response, uh, Managed Service Security Platforms, Threat Intelligence, as well as EDR and HDR, kind of like cutting edge technology. Thank you. Wow, that, that's, that's a very broad spectrum that you uh, have expertise in. That's very rare uh, nowadays. So, uh, like a question that comes to my mind is what does a day in your life look like today with expertise across so many areas? Like what does a, your day today look like? Uh, sir, mostly uh, <clears throat> I work with the various uh, business units, uh, stakeholders uh, trying to provide the best uh, security and resiliency uh, service and solutioning to our trusted customer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so such as working with offering team, solutioning, delivery team, uh, based on the projects and uh, I do architecture review. So how are we going to do like the solutioning such as, uh, let's say we have got the SASE centralized uh, network management uh, solution in the next year. So how are we going to simulate and so how are we going to put the component in order to meet their business goals and, you know, <clears throat> the, the objectives. Okay. Uh, that that makes sense. Uh, so today we are going to talk about primarily supply chain security. So let's dive into it. Uh, so let's start with some definition. What is supply uh, software supply chain security to you? To you? Uh, well, uh, software supply chains uh, refers to the measures and practices 
implemented to uh, safeguard the integrity, confidentialities, and availability software throughout its life cycle, from the development to uh, deployment and ongoing maintenance. Uh, basically, this involves ensuring that the software components, uh, libraries, dependencies, and updates integrated into an organization system remain free uh, from vulnerabilities and authorized alterations or malicious code ingestion. Okay. So uh, that that's a very good definition. So why is it important for organizations to think about it? Uh, absolutely. So the importance of uh, software supply chain security cannot be overstated, particularly in today's uh, interconnected digital landscape. There's a few key reasons why organization needs to prioritize it. Uh, first of all, risk mitigation, <clears throat> protecting data integrity, business continuities and reputation management, compliance and regulatory requirement, and safeguarding against emerging threats. So when it comes to uh, risk mitigation, software supply chain often involves numerous components sourced from various vendors. So any vulnerabilities or compromise in these components can be tickled down and pose security risk to an organization's entire ecosystem. Implementing robust security measures helps mitigate these risks. So when it comes to uh, mm -hmm. protecting data integrity, Malaysia's utter a uh, target software supply chain to inject malware, compromise uh, code integrity, or introduce backdoors. By securing the software supply chain safeguards against these threats, ensuring the integrity and confidentiality of the sensitive data. So we also need to take care of a business continuity and reputation management, as I said earlier. So a breach or compromise in the software supply chain can lead to uh, service disruptions, financial losses, and reputation damage, you know? So proactive well, security measure mechanism, you know, maintain a uh, business continuity and foster customer trust. So we also need to align all the compliance and uh, regulatory requirements, such as like NICS, uh, you know, related, uh, federal related uh, compliance and regulatory uh, GDPR. So this, this will also <clears throat> ensure software supply chain helps organization comply with this regulation uh, and standard and you know, prevent, uh, you know, uh, some sort of uh, cyber threats from the against attacker. Okay. Well, one of the things that you highlighted is like, uh, if you are using any vendor or anything like that, then any software that they are building, you are also vulnerable for that. Right. And one of the parts of that is open source software and adoption exactly. of open source software has been on the rise for, for a decade or so. And uh, especially with supply chain security attacks to SolarWinds, Twilio, PyPy, uh, there, is, there is more attention now. And in one of the recent studies by Anchor, they highlighted that around 85 to 97% of the enterprise code, code base uses open source, uh, which means they are, they, have, they are vulnerable to supply chain attacks. So we, we received this question from a first-time security leader. How should they think about and tackle uh, these supply chain security challenges in their organization? Right, exactly. So uh, for a first uh, science security leader concerned about uh, supply chain security challenges, especially in the context of increasing open source adoption. So here's a few guidance, you know, like we can talk at this issue where we should start addressing challenges uh, with supply chain security. So we have to understand the software various of material, now today, the popular name as s -Bahn. So begin by comprehending the software base of materials, which essentially acts as a manifest, detailing all the components within your software stack. It is a crucial mm -hmm. for identifying vulnerabilities and dependency in open source and third-party software. So there's the second thing is risk assessments and inventory management. So conduct a throughout risk assessment and inventory of your software supply chain. 
identify all open source and third party components utilized in your organization's code base. This step will have understanding for the share vulnerability. Uh, the next thing mm -hmm. is uh, establishing security policy. So like your organization needs to develop and implement robust security policies that focus on batting and monitoring the components integrated into your software that will ensure mm -hmm. uh, these policy encompass regularly vulnerability assessments and adherence to security best practices. So the, the other two more important things in this topic is that uh, continuous monitoring updates and vendor community collaboration. So when it's time to uh, continuous monitoring and update, uh, you have to emphasize continuous monitoring and pro updates for all components within the software supply chain. This includes mm -hmm. uh, staying relevant for security advisory, uh, patches, update from the vendor and open source community. Yeah, yeah. so one follow-up question that comes to my mind is, let's say you get the SWARM data from all of the vendors and uh, you, then it becomes overwhelming, right? That you have so much data, so much uh, dependencies, vulnerability information, all of that. As a first-time leader, where should I start from? Let's say I got, I have 20 vendors. I got SWARM from 20 of them. Where, where should I start? Uh, sure, well, absolutely. So the starting point uh, would be like integrating your uh, CI/CD pipeline and enabling the test records, tooling, and practices. Uh, for instance, implement uh, software composition analysis as CA tools into your existing CI/CD pipeline. So uh, consider like investing in SCA2 that assists in identifying and managing vulnerability within mm -hmm. your software supply chain. So these two uh, provide insight into the components and dependency, aiding in risk assessment. So let's say you have got a container uh, orchestration platform, you're using containerization application too much and you can also enable uh, status code uh, scanning, dynamic scanning into your pipeline uh, along with the SCA2. So another thing is uh, adopting uh, as form formats and standards such as SPDA, mm -hmm. Cyclone DAs. So begin mm -hmm. uh, implementing as form standards uh, within your organization. It will involve cooperating as form into your procurement process, ensuring supplier provide as forms and utilizing these documents for risk assessment. And then you will need to educate and train your team what is the secure coding practices, you know, how the software supply chain security is really important so that it can impact and damage your organization, reputations and business losses. Mm -hmm. And now you have to, uh, the most important thing is you have to also establish uh, incident response plan. Uh, for instance, uh, developing a comprehensive incident response plan, especially tailored to your supply chain security breaches. This plan should outline a procedure of identifying, containing, and mitigating the impact of potential breaches. Okay, so if I understand correctly, SPOM uh, or the SPOM helps with the uh, software supply chain and having a good grasp of the software supply chain helps with your incident response. It helps with your uh, procurement process and all of those areas, right? So, Absolutely. as a as a security organization, it it feels like SBOM is one of the key areas, right? Plays a major role in your overall vendor management. Now. Uh, how can SBOM be used or analyzed? You mentioned that you can use uh, integrate with CI/CD pipelines and analyze using SCA tool. How can that analysis be done so that the overall security and compliance can be improved? I uh, sure think so. Uh, so when we apply the SBOM to so understanding, we have to understand the challenges in, in the supply chain security. So uh, basically, uh, it can uh, improve in the uh, visibility, transparency, risk assessments, vulnerability management, and compliance and regulatory requirements. 
So visibilities and transparency as one are offer a comprehensive list of software components used in an application, including dependencies and their relationships. This visibility is crucial due to the growth of uh, complexity of software supply chain. Okay. Yeah. So if a follow-up question to that is often what happens is when uh, you get the SPOM information, vendors uh, share or open source libraries even share uh, their image information, container image, and they often have a signature, right? So that you can validate that the image is, uh, or image is not tampered with. So can you, can you, for our audience, can you highlight what is container image signing and why is it important for DevSecOps? Well, uh, container image signings are involved uh, digitally signed container images and their integrity, authenticity, and provenance of throughout the software developments and development lifecycle. The process is crucial in the DevSecOps uh, for several reasons. Uh, security assurance, trust and compliance, and the same uh, risk mitigation. Uh, when we talk about uh, security assurance, uh, provide the value in the container image signing when it's come to the desktop box uh, space. Sign, signing verifying that container image has not been tampered or altered, mitigating the risk of deploying compromised or malicious software into your runtime environment, runtime system. So the trust mm -hmm. and compliance establish trust by confirming the authenticity and the origin of the container image, aligning with the compliance requirements and industry standards. So uh, regarding the risk, yeah, risk mitigation, it aids in risk mitigation by providing a secure way to manage and track container images reducing vulnerability in, in the software supply chain. Okay, so uh, now let's say I'm convinced that container image signing is important. What are different methods of signing container images? Uh, container image signing have uh, various methods. Uh, so in the next year, you have got the Docker content trust and the tab framework. So this is like the most important and popular framework nowadays. So Docker Trust Contents uh, utilize cryptographic signatures to sign container images. It leverages the concept of a rookie and free repository keys to ensure the integrity of the images. This method provides an option to enforce image signing for repository, allowing verification before pulling or running images into your runtime environment. So when it's come to the TAP framework, the TAP is a security framework, as you know, that provides a software, secure software update system, and it offers protections uh, against various types of attacks and compromise within the software distribution networks. TAP also ensures the same, the security and integrity of the container images by utilizing a decentralized approach to signing verified images. But when, 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 we, when we like to talk about the, the, like the, the technology in general, so we've got like OpenID, Connect, JSON, Web Token, and that are used for authentications and authorization within container ecosystem. Why not directly use hmm. in the image signing? Yeah, these standards can be complement image signing method by providing secure authentication mechanisms. Okay, uh, so, if a follow-up question to that uh, that comes to my mind is uh, that there are you mentioned about Docker Trust. Similarly, there is Cosign. There are different methods, right? What are some of the Absolutely. best practices that I should keep in mind when I am incorporating image signing? Uh, so you are talking about the challenge implementing the container uh, signing image and overcoming them, right? Right. So yeah. Right. So why container image signing offer? immense benefits challenge exists. So first of all, we have to have to uh, take a look the key management. So whereas your like root key, private keys are hosted, handling keys securely and so ensuring proper key rotation pose a challenge. Mm -hmm. So another challenge would be integration complexity. 
So by integrating the signing into the CI/CD pipeline without affecting the speed of current, your bit process and efficiency can be complex. So to overcome these challenges, a key uh, implement key management best practice, safeguard keys, follow a uh, key rotation protocols, and leverage key management to such as AWS, KMS, or uh, HashiCorp Bob. This kind of you know mm -hmm. the tools you can leverage for enterprise and open source uh, environment as well. So automate signing integration. Use uh, automation to to seamlessly integrate signing into uh, the CI and CD pipelines. Okay. Yeah, I think the key word that I got from your response is the automation, right? Uh, exactly. Instead of doing things manually, integrate it as part of the CI CD process so that it uh, the signing process is automated. You are not doing it manually. So now the question is, uh, <clears throat> uh, there is code signing or image signing. Uh, and when it comes to prioritization, what should be prioritized first? And how, how should what parameters should organizations look at while prioritizing this? So mm -hmm. effective container image signing relies on uh, some of the best practices such as adopt trust or uh, trusted registry so use the trusted repositories and registry that support image signing capability such as your own uh, private docker registry or enterprise class repository like a jfog artifact tree so implement a continuous monitoring integrate into those your trusted uh, registry Regularly monitor and validate sign container images for any anomalies or tampering. Okay, and enforce mm -hmm. a policy uh, enforcement. So establish and enforce policy regarding sign images, ensuring uh, compliance across the development and deployment process. Like you can leverage like open policy agents. Okay, if uh, you are not uh, from this trusted store, you cannot run the image in the runtime. This kind of implementations mm -hmm. and policy enforcement can be done mm -hmm. in now today technology. Okay, uh, so you highlighted some of the best practices when it comes to implementing uh, image signing, and one of the recommendations that you have is integrated as part of the CI/CD process. So, when integrating with the CI/CD process, do you have any additional best practices or recommendations, or uh, like key rotation? Those uh, take care of it already. Uh, Sure. So, integrating the code signing uh, seamlessly into a CI/CD pipeline is uh, crucial for the security of software throughout the development mm -hmm. and deployment process. So, I would recommend uh, automate the code signing uh, process and utilize mm -hmm. secret key storage or management system and uh, integrating mm -hmm. with your batching control system. For instance, you might use a uh, Visual Studio for your code development. You know, developing your uh, playbooks or uh, whatever. So you you can integrate mm -hmm. you know the safeguard cryptographic key for so, uh, code signing in secure and compliance uh, key management system, and uh, implement mm -hmm. approval workflows and policy. So mm -hmm. establish approval workflow and policy for code signing. Define clear guidelines on when and how code should be signed, ensuring compliance with security standards and organizational policy. So I have so many things to recommend, like continuous monitoring, uh, validation, secure artifact repository uh, registry, and uh, document mm -hmm. and training, documentation training and review, and like improvements such as like secure code review, manual process. Uh, what is the control to promote to the production? What are like minimum standards? Mm -hmm. This kind of thing also can, you know, leverage into your like DevOps teams or dust recordings and security stick together and try mm -hmm. to improve like workflow and process. Yeah. So what, what I'm hearing is like do the basics right, right? Even though you are, whether you are integrating in the CI CD or you're doing manually, whatever it is, do the basics right. Like your KMS or the key management should be uh, defined properly, or you should have policies for uh, stronger keys and stuff like that. So doing the basics right helps you with even the code signing process. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, 
so uh yeah that, that that's a very good way to end the security question section thank you so much ong for the lovely conversation uh here are a few important points i gathered one is software bill of materials or sbom is key for supply chain security it helps organizations understand dependencies and vulnerabilities associated with the dependencies the second one is to analyze sboms utilize uh, organizations should utilize a software composition analysis or a sca tool and integrate it as uh, integrate it uh, as part of the ci cd process the last one is some of the best practices of image signing are using like a key management solution which has capability basic capabilities like key rotation or secure uh, root and private key storage uh use of a trusted registry with continuous monitoring to name a few uh thank you let's go to the next section which is rating security practices so the way it works is i'll i'll uh, share a security practice uh you need to rate it 1 through 5 1 being the worst and 5 being the best and you can also add some context uh, why you are giving it a particular rating sure so let me start with the first one the first one says conduct periodic security audits to identify vulnerabilities threats and weaknesses in your systems and applications okay mm -hmm. i would uh, say a 4 that is really important okay. um the second one is devops practices are needed to move fast and deploy code to production security practices are not the most important right now uh i would say uh two because secure security <laughs> practice is important for sure you know <laughs> right uh makes sense uh the last one is continuous integration is a must for devops practices security architecture review should be conducted as part of the integration itself five okay uh that's what i was expecting also uh okay so um so i generally ask this question to all of our guests uh do you have any recommendation reading recommendation for our audience it can be a blog or a book or a podcast or anything that you want to recommend our audience all uh, i would recommend to uh, go through the microsoft security blogs and it's you know have comprehensive approach not only into the dashboards area you can also see security operation and zero trust kind of architecture i would recommend to to reviews and keep track you know what they are trying to release and it's it's pretty good so you know i would recommend that one first oh thank you so much yeah so That's thank great. you so much uh, ong Uh, for joining and sharing your uh, knowledge with us on supply chain security devsecops image signing and many other areas thanks for having me sorry yeah absolutely and to our audience thank you so much for watching see you in the next episode thank you thank you everyone